you know, I want to start this this week off a little different. Um, you know, so I'm just going to start off by asking everybody, pray for Haiti. Please pray for Haiti. If you are a person of faith, if you have a relationship with your God, I don't care what you call him, what you refer to him as, please pray for Haiti. And I can't help but think what is going on over there. It wasn't but a month ago that the news got out that their president was assassinated. Then over the weekend, we get the word that there's an earthquake. And every time I turn on the news, the numbers are, they're not just going up by 10 or a dozen or even a hundred. Now, last time I checked, it was something like 1300 people confirmed dead. And I can't help but think that this is only on the heels of the earthquake that struck Haiti in 2010, where approximately 200,000 people lost their lives. So again, pray for Haiti. If you know anybody in that area, if you know anybody who has loved ones in that area, please pray for them. And I was sitting and I'm thinking to myself and I'm asking God, like, you know, it's one thing to have a warning. It's one thing to know that your life is going to be turned upside down because you have a minute to prepare for it. But it's a whole other thing. If somebody walk up alongside of you and just sucker punch you just hit you out of the clear blue. You had no idea it was even coming. And I gotta imagine that there's people over there who was going on about their life, doing what they do every single day, working, hanging out, just doing what people do. And their whole world was turned upside down in a blink of an eye, no warning signs. Everything that they knew to be normal was just destroyed in a matter of seconds. And as I'm sitting there and I'm just thinking to myself and I'm asking God, how do you allow this to happen to innocent people? How do you allow this to happen to people who were no doubt not bothering anybody? They were just living life. Why do you allow this to happen when just a few years ago, they had an earthquake that took over 200,000 people. And what I got back was sometimes you don't know the answer until after the tragedy. And God took my mind to this man from Galilee. This man who walked the streets of Jerusalem, who was born sinless, no sin in him. And he walked the earth wanting to do nothing but spread the gospel, wanting to do nothing but bless people and tell people about his father. And because of that, he was beat. He was spit on. He was hung on a cross, crucified, stuck in his side with a spear and left to bleed to death for doing nothing but trying to bring good into this world. But that man, Jesus Christ, the guy who I pray to on a daily basis, his death, his death was only part of the story. But the real blessing was in his rebirth. That's where the blessing came. And I need y'all to really understand, we don't know what's going on over there. But sometimes when you're in the midst of a struggle, when you're in the midst of everything in your world being flipped upside down, the blessing is just around the corner. You might not see it. You might not understand why you're going through what you're going through, but the blessing, it's in the rebuild. It's in the rebirth. And even as I sit and I think, because so many of us, so many of us, 
We are in the midst of a storm of our own. We don't have no clue why we're going through what we're going through. Some of us need to sit and focus on the fact that when you go through tragedy, on the other side of that is triumph. When you go through adversity, on the other side of that is strength, is resilience. Some of you right now, you're born to alcoholic parents. You're born to drug addict parents. You were children raised in incest. You were children raised in the system, forced to care, in and out of the system. Had no idea why you're going through it, when you were going through it. But look at you now today. You couldn't understand back then that that was just one chapter of your book. It wasn't the conclusion. That was just one piece of your story. But that's not the way your story was ever going to end. Because in order to bring the best out of you, sometimes you got to go through the worst. And if you're here tonight, movers, I got to believe that you took those times that you went through and you triumphed over them. That's just a blip on the radar now. That's just something that you use as motivation. That's just something that you look back on and are able to draw strength from. But the real blessing is in the rebuild. Don't let what happened yesterday, even if you don't understand it, become a crutch, become something that you hold on to, become that excuse, become that thing that you don't let go of to reach your full potential in the future. Never forget the blessing. It's in the rebirth. It's in the rebuild. But in order to get to that rebirth, sometimes you got to destroy some things in order to rebuild it. Some of us right now, if we take a second and step back and look in the mirror, we gonna have to destroy some bad habits we got. We got to destroy all of the things that are holding us back from reaching our full potential. Some of us got to destroy not being able to stop telling lies. Some of us got to destroy not being able to stop giving excuses. Some of us got to destroy not being able to get up on time, to follow through to do what you said you was going to do, to stick to your word. Sometimes in order to rebuild, you got to be ready to destroy. And I'm telling you movers, what is it that you're holding on to? What is it that you won't let go? What is it that's holding you back? Destroy it and then rebuild. And once it's destroyed, let it go forever. Let it go. Stop holding on to it. Some of us right now are holding on to a man who ain't no good for you. You're holding on to somebody by outward appearances. Everything looks good. Everything look good. Y'all look like the perfect couple. But behind closed doors, this man makes you feel less than the queen that you really are. Behind closed doors, Y'all ain't slept in the same bedroom for years. This is a man who don't support you. This is a man who's not there with you. Let him go. And the same thing go for some of you men out there. Some of y'all are holding on to this woman who said to death do us part. And she meant every single word of that because she is killing you with distress. She's killing you with the aggravation. She's killing you with the doubt. She's killing you with not trusting you when it comes to finances, not trusting you when it comes to raising the kids, not trusting you 
with doing the right thing in the household. Let it go. Some of y'all are holding on to a job. Yes, it's safe. They know you, you know them. You can do that job with your eyes closed and you're holding on because it's a guaranteed paycheck every other week. But every time you log in, you go in, that job is killing you. You're dying a slow death. Let it go. It's time to let it go. And see, some of y'all know where I'm about to go with this. Because I done been there. And I understand that there's life on the other side of what seems to be a tragedy. Some of y'all got these men and women in your life. And they use you up and abuse you and take all of those good years from you. And you're holding on to it because this is the person that everybody knows you to be with. Everybody, when they, when they think you, they think them. And when that person finally got on your last nerve and you let them go, it was only then that the rebirth was able to take place and God opened those doors so that the real love of your life can walk in the building. Some of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. When you finally got let go from that job, you held on to it for as long as you possibly could. It was them that let you go. And even though you couldn't see what was on the other side of that, it was because you finally got out of that job that you was able to now start that business that you always wanted to start. Let it go, y'all. The blessings in the rebuild. The blessing is in the rebirth. Don't you understand that? I know some of y'all right now, you're in the midst of a storm. All hell is breaking loose in your life. You ain't been able to pay your rent in over a year. And that moratorium is about to be up. Your car note is overdue. The repo man is sitting outside of your building. Your mortgage is backed up. You don't know if you can pay the taxes on your house. But you got to have faith, y'all. You got to have faith. I talk so much about a man named Muhammad Ali because at his prime, they stripped him of everything. It wasn't just what he did in the ring, but at his prime, they said, we want you to go over to Vietnam. And this was a man who said, no, I'm willing to sacrifice it all because I trust in some greater than all of y'all. He got my back. And even though he damn near went broke, even though in his prime, they took five years from him. It's only because he stood on faith. It's only because he stood on those principles that when he came back, he was more than just a fighter. He was legendary. I'm saying trust and have faith, y'all. We movers. Yes, we can go down the road of what we see. People can tell you, take this step, take that step. This is what you're supposed to do. Step one, step two, step three. But there's sometimes in order to get what, to where you want to go, this thing is about blind faith. I think of Mandela, another one of my heroes, who in his prime locked this man up for 27 years lost his family, lost his wife. But after 27 years of languishing in a prison in South Africa, he became the first elected president of South Africa. Do you understand that sometimes you got to be willing to let go of the life that you know and have faith that on the other side, of the rebuild, on the other side of the rebirth, 
that is where your blessings lie. So I'm asking you guys tonight, pray with me for all that's going on in the world. We see all of this fighting over in Afghanistan. We see the earthquake in Haiti. And there's so much going on in our own backyard that we might not understand. But sometimes it's not for us to understand in real time. You will only know after the fact, after the devastation, after the tragedy. And that's where the strength comes. That's where the triumph comes. Movers, I don't know what you're going through. I have no idea what's on your plate. But if you're going through it, if things seem like the bottom in your world is falling out, trust God. If everything that you work hard for, everything that you sacrifice for, everything that you put it all on the line for, seems like it's all going up in smoke. Instead of fighting, embrace it. Understand that sometimes in order to rebuild, sometimes in order to get that kingdom, you got to be ready to destroy what was standing there in the first place.